page. Hmm? We'll read. You read? Yes. Wait. Which page? by sages to be a worker whose fruitive action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every act is devoid of desire for sense gratification. The opposite is ignorance. Those who are in knowledge of sense gratification they are devoid of knowledge. Yes. He is said by sages to be a worker whose fruitive action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. He is said by sages to be a worker whose fruitive action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. This is very common thing. Uh, everyone has to act, but if he acts in full knowledge, then that is perfection of activity. Uh, just like in our ordinary life, if we do business or whatever we do, if you are in full knowledge of the state laws and act accordingly, that is perfection of our activities. Go on. Abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities, ever satisfied and independent, he performs no fruits of action, although engaged in all kinds of undertakings. Yeah. Abandoning all attachment to the results of the activities. Oh. Everyone is aspiring some result of his activity. Oh. So uh, the plain example is, suppose you are working in an office so you are not concerned with the result. You have to simply do your duty. The result, the ultimate profit and loss of that establishment is concerned for the proprietors or the directors. But your duty is that the post which you are occupying, you must do your uh, work very nicely. That's your duty, without uh, being attached to the result. The result will be enjoyed uh, by the proprietors of that of establishment. Go on. Twenty-one. Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence, perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions, and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by sinful reaction. Yes, suppose a man is a manager, a cashier in the uh, bank. He is receiving millions of dollars daily, but he does not claim the proprietorship. He is simply handling millions of dollars, but he knows that I am not the proprietor. Similarly, in our, uh, these material activities, we may have the chance of handling millions of dollars. Practically nobody comes here with millions of dollars, neither one goes with millions of dollars. Everyone comes here empty hand, the child comes empty hand, 
and the dead body goes empty hand. So, between the birth and death, the small duration of life, we are supposed to possess so many things. That is our false possession. Actually, you don't possess. Uh, just like so long I am cashier in the bank, I am supposed to deal with millions of dollars, but that is not my money. In this consciousness, this is Krishna consciousness, to understand everything belongs to Krishna. If one acts in that way, that everything, ishāvā samidam sarvam, the Isha Upanishad says, everything belongs to God, but God has given me chance to handle these things. Therefore, my knowledge and intelligence will be there if I utilize for serving God. That is my intelligence. As soon as I utilize them for my sense gratification, then I am entrapped. The same example can be given. Uh, if the bank cashier thinks, so, oh, so many millions of dollars at my disposal, uh, let me something and put it in my pocket, then he is entrapped. Uh, otherwise, you enjoy. Uh, you get good salary, you go to get good comforts, and do your work nicely for Krishna. Uh, that is Krishna consciousness. Everything should be considered as Krishna's, uh, not a farthing mine. That is Krishna consciousness. Yes. He who is satisfied with gain, which comes of its own accord, who is free from duality and does not envy, who is steady both in success and failure, is never entangled, although performing action. Yes. Now, if I think that I am poor man, or uh, think bank proprietor and directors, they have got so much money, the theory of the communist theory, uh, they are trying to attack others, that they are uh, snatched our money. Actually, one should be satisfied, just like a bank clerk or a bank cashier, should be satisfied with his post and the wages he gets. He should be satisfied. If God pleases, he will be elevated to a higher position. That is God's grace. But we should not be disturbed. Ah, we should be satisfied. And thus disturbance can be checked only if we are in Krishna consciousness. Oh. He will be surprised in 1942, there was an artificial famine in India by politicians. And practically they were starving. And one American uh, gentleman, very responsible man, he was present. He said that in our country, if such starvation would have uh, happened, there, there would have been revolution. But the Vedic culture is so nice that nobody even stole a pin from others' pocket. They starved. Because the culture is, they are satisfied. Well, God has put me in this condition. Why shall I encroach upon others' property? That is Vedic culture. Isavasamidam sarvam. Everything belongs to God. Whatever He has allotted to me, that is my uh, position. I can. Tena taktena bhunjita. Whatever is allotted to you, be satisfied. Ma gridha kasachit dhanam. You do not encroach upon others' property. If anyone is satisfied in this way, in Krishna consciousness, where is the question of stealing? Uh, there is no question of stealing. There is no need of law for the thieves. Uh, people will become so honest, he will be satisfied. 
So this Krishna consciousness movement is all pervading. Either you take socially, politically, religiously, scientifically, philosophically, any way you take. Just as like sandalwood. Sandalwood, you rub it on the stone. In any way, the pulp will be flavored. It is not that if you rub the wood on the stone in this way, then the pulp will come flavored. No. Krishna consciousness is so nice. If you apply in any field of activities, you will see it is perfect. Either you apply in industry or in politics or in sociology or in philosophy or in science. Therefore, Bhagavad says, oh, that whatever capacity you may have, either you are a scientist or a lawyer or an engineer or a rich man, a capitalist, whatever you may be, your duty is to utilize your talent for Krishna consciousness. That's all. That is perfection. Yes. A Krishna conscious person does not make much endeavor even to maintain his body. He is satisfied with gains which are obtained of their own accord. He neither begs nor borrows, but he labors honestly as far as in his own power, and is satisfied with, with whatever is obtained by his own honest labor. A Krishna conscious person is therefore independent <coughs> in his livelihood. He does not allow anyone's service to hamper his own service to Krishna. However, for the service of the Lord, he can participate in any kind of action without being disturbed by the duality of the material world. The duality of the material world is felt in terms of heat and cold or misery and happiness. A Krishna conscious person is above this duality because he does not hesitate to act in any way for the satisfaction of Krishna. As he does not care for duality, therefore he is steady both in success and in failure. These signs are visible when one is in full in transcendental knowledge. 23. The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature and who is fully situated in transcendental knowledge merges entirely into transcendence. Yes. The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature. The modes of material nature are three. Goodness, passion, and ignorance. Uh, somebody is working in the material world in the quality of goodness. Uh, in Vedic culture, these divisions are very distinct, just like Brahmins, sannyasins. They are supposed to be working in goodness because they are simply working for God consciousness or Krishna consciousness, Brahmins, business. The Kshatriyas, they are working in the modes of passion. They want to possess land, they want to be king, they want to be leader of the citizens, and they see to the protection of the citizens. This is called in the mode of passion. And the third degree is the mercantile community. They are engaged in trades, commerce. In this way, the fourth grade of man is the laborer class. They have no capacity either to become Brahmin, Kshatriya, or Vaishya. They have to take shelter of somebody and must be satisfied with the wages he takes from that. In this, in this age, the Vedic literature says, Kalo Sudra Sambhava. In this age, practically everyone is a sudra, labor class, because everyone is dependent. The Brahmin, Kshatriya, and Vaishya, they are not dependent. But labor class, they are dependent. So, because this human civilization at the present moment is so made that everyone is dependent, nobody is uh, self-sufficient. One has to work somewhere for his livelihood. So, uh, in this age, practically everyone is uh, dependent or laborer class. 
Now here it is said that uh, the work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature. Now these division, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or the intelligent class, the administrative class, the mercantile class, and the laborer class. You, you say in any way, uh, these are material activities. But when you engage yourself in Krishna consciousness, either you are a Brahmin, Kshatriya, or Vaishya, or Sudra, then you are transcendent immediately. Uh, just like in this body, there are different parts and section. The head, head is one section. The arm, another section. The abdomen, another section. The legs, another section. So, the leg is considered to be laborer class, carrying me. The hand is working, protecting me. The brain is giving me intelligence. In this way, every part is working for the whole body. Similarly, either you become intelligent class of man, or you become administrator, or you become mercantile class or laborer. If you engage yourself in Krishna consciousness, then your position is transcendental. You are no more in the material nature. This is the process of transcendental uh, position. Gone. <coughs> to him, Brahman, the supreme is the offering, Brahman is the oblation, and the sacrificial fire, and by Brahman the sacrifice is performed. By performing action in this way, one ultimately attains the supreme purport. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom through his full contribution to spiritual activities for the consummation is absolute, and the things offered are also of the same spiritual nature. How activities in Krishna consciousness can lead one ultimately to the spiritual goal is described here. There are various activities in Krishna consciousness, and all of them will be described in the following verses. But for the present, just the principle of Krishna consciousness is described. A conditioned soul, entangled in material contamination, is sure to act in the material atmosphere, and yet he has to get out of such an environment. The process by which the conditioned soul can get out of the material atmosphere is Krishna consciousness. For example, a person who is suffering from a disorder... A, a patient, a patient. A patient who is suffering, yeah. For example, a patient who is suffering from a disorder of the bowels due to overindulgence in milk products is cured by another milk product, curd. Similarly, the materially absorbed conditioned soul can be cured by Krishna consciousness, as is prescribed here in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, it is a very good example. Ah. Sometimes, ah, ah, in India, of course, out of our greediness, we take too much milk products, kheer and sweet rice and uh, but we pranas so if you take too much milk, then there is possibility of desire, disorder of the body. Ah, ghee. Therefore, when you go to the physician, he will give you some medicine, and he will ask you to take this medicine with sugar. Now, what is this sugar? This sugar is also milk preparation. Ah. Now, you can doubt how is that. My disorder of bile is due to taking too much milk preparation. How it will be cured by sugar? So, this is the way. The sugar is a, although milk preparation, it is, action is different. Similarly, you will find that these boys and girls acting in Krishna consciousness, what they are doing? Uh, they have rented a nice house, which is called temple. They are cooking there, eating there, uh, dancing and singing. And the out, outside that they are there, what is this Krishna consciousness? They are living in the nice house and they are eating very nicely, dancing, singing. What is the difference? We also do that. 
we go to the club and uh, eat very nicely and dance also. So what is the difference? There is the difference. What is the difference? The one milk preparation causes disorder, another milk preparation cures. Uh, this is practical. Uh, another milk preparation cures you. If you go on dancing in the club and eating in the club, <laughs> gradually you become diseased materially. You see? And the same dancing and same eating here, you become spiritually advanced. Oh. So nothing has to be stopped. Simply it has to be changed ah, by the direction of an expert physician. That's all. Oh. That the expert physician gives you sugar mixed with some medicine. Actually medicine is just to bluff the patient. Actually, the jugurt will act. Uh, so similarly, yeah, we have to do everything, but because it is mixed up with that medicine of Krishna consciousness, it will cure your material disease. That is the process. Uh, because it is mixed up with some medicine, which is called Krishna consciousness, therefore, your dancing, your eating, your loving affairs, all whatever you want, there is. But it is well treated. It will not entangle you. It will give more and more enlightenment of spiritual understanding. This is Krishna God. Yes. This process is generally known as yajna, or activity simply meant for the satisfaction of Vishnu or Krishna. Therefore, the more the activities of the material world are performed in Krishna consciousness or Bhavishnu only, the more the atmosphere becomes spiritualized by complete absorption. Brahman means spiritual. The Lord is spiritual, and the rays of His transcendental body are called Brahma Jyoti, His spiritual effulgence. Everything that exists is situated in that Brahma Jyoti, and when the Jyoti is covered by the illusion of Maya, or sense gratification. It is called material. Mm. Now, this is the difference between material and spiritual. Try to understand. Oh, just like in the oh, uh, sun sign, there is cloud. Uh, that cloudy atmosphere is not very good. But when there is bright sun sign, you say, congratulate your friend, oh, today is a very nice day. Now the sun sign is always there. The cloud also is an interaction of the sun sign. The cloud is nothing, but due to excessive heat, it absorbs water from the sea or anywhere else. And it becomes gas and it stands in the sun sign. But it does not cover all the sun sign. Similarly, Krishna consciousness is the original consciousness. As soon as it is clouded by material consciousness, what is that material consciousness? That it is mine, it is for my sense gratification. That is material consciousness. And if you keep yourself always intact, that everything is for Krishna, then there is no cloud. The cloud is material. Actually there is no uh, material existence. Just like cloud appears in the sky, it remains temporary for a few days or few hours, and again disappears. You do not know where the cloud has gone. Similarly, material consciousness is the covering of the spirit soul. Uh, so as soon as this covering is taken away, the bright sunshine is there, the cloud. As soon as the cloud is gone, the bright sunshine is there. Then everything is sunshine, light. Similarly, as soon as this consciousness, material consciousness, that everything belongs for my satisfaction, sense gratification, that is material. And if you are in Krishna consciousness, that is spirituality. The things does not change. Simply the consciousness changes. Just like the sun sign does not change. Simply the cloud changes. It appears and disappears. 
Bhutya Bhutya Pralya. So, if you keep yourself always in bright sunshine, just as if you go above the cloud, as you have experienced by plane journey, that you go above the cloud and they will find simply sunshine, no more cloud, no more cloud. So just keep yourself in Krishna consciousness and this cloud of material existence will disappear or you will be above. Even you can see them, and that will not affect you. So, this is the price. Gone. This material feature can be removed at once by Krishna consciousness. Yes. Wherein the offering for the cause of wherein the offering for the cause of Krishna consciousness, the consuming agent of such an offering or contribution, the process of consumption, the contributor, and the result of such activities are all combined together. Brahman, or the Absolute Truth. The Absolute Truth, covered by Maya, is called matter. Matter dovetailed for the cause of the Absolute Truth regained its spiritual quality. Krishna Consciousness is the process of converting the illusory consciousness into Brahman, or the Supreme. When the mind is fully absorbed in such Krishna Consciousness, it is said to be in Samadhi, or trance. Anything done in such transcendental consciousness is called yajna, or sacrifice for the absolutes. And in that condition of spiritual consciousness, the contributor, the contribution, the consumption, the performer or leader of the performance, and the result or ultimate gain, everything becomes one in the absolute, the supreme Brahman. That is the explanation of Krishna consciousness. Yes. 25. Right. Some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them, and some of them offer sacrifices in the fire of the Supreme Brahman. Purport. As described above, a person engaged in discharging duties in Krishna consciousness is also called a perfect yogi, or a first-class mystic. But there are others also who perform similar sacrifices in the worship of demigods and still others who sacrifice to the Supreme Brahman, or the impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord. So there are different kinds of sacrifices in terms of different categories. Such different categories of sacrifice by different types of performers only superficially demark varieties of sacrifice. Factual sacrifice means to satisfy the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, and is also known as Yajna. Just take a a small example. Now you are paying some tax in the waterworks department. So this waterworks department or the director of the waterworks department may be considered as a demigod. <coughs> but the money you sacrifice uh, for payment in the waterworks department, that goes to the government. The water works department or the man in charge, the director of the water works department, does not consume that. Similarly, in the Vedic rituals, there are many sacrificial ritualistic ceremony, uh, demigods, but uh, in that sacrifice there is Vishnu also. Uh, therefore, Vishnu is called Yogesha, the master of the sacrifice. The demigods cannot accept the result of the sacrifice. Vishnu is there. Uh, of course, you have no experience of this performance, eh? that is a basic ritual performance. Actually, the demigods, uh, they cannot accept anything from you. But the sacrificer, he approaches a demigod for quick result, for material benefit. And that is, these things will be explained in the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So this is the process. Ultimately, uh, the, it goes to the absolute throne. So those who are intelligent, they uh, directly make connection with the absolute person or the supreme personality of God at Krishna. Then everything is automatically done. Uh, God. All the different varieties of sacrifice can be placed within two primary divisions, 
sacrifice of worldly possession, <coughs> and sacrifice in pursuit of transcendental knowledge. Those who are in Krishna consciousness sacrifice all material possessions for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, while others who want some temporary material <coughs> happiness sacrifice their material possessions to satisfy demigods such as Indra, the sun, etc. And others who are impersonalists sacrifice in the sense of merging into the existence of impersonal Brahma. The demigods and powerful living entities appointed by the Supreme Lord for the maintenance and supervision of all material functions like heating, watering, and lighting of the universe. Those who are interested in such supplies of material benefits worship the demigods by various sacrifices according to the Vedic rituals. They are called <coughs> Arisvanabhadi, or believers in Bobbisharavadi. Bobbisharavadi means believing in many gods. Actually, God is one. But his servants, who are known as demigods, so less intelligent class of men, they accept demigods as God. Just like a less, a less intelligent class of man uh, takes a police constable. He uh, raises his hand like this, and uh, the car is stopped, even if it belongs to a great rich man. So his child may think that uh, this constable is very great man. Uh, you see, he's very important man. But the father knows he is nothing. <laughs> Similarly, uh, those who are interested in demigods, they are like children. Uh, this constable is very important, you see, because by his hand, I had, my father had to stop my car, you see. So, the antavattu phalam tesha. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita I will find there is a statement, kāmastastha hitagyana jajanti annadīvata. Those who go to worship the demigods, they have lost their intelligence on account of too much lusty uh, uh, propensity. Just like sometimes a person goes to bribe the policeman, constable, because he is illegal. But if you become, uh, I am to say, uh, true to your state laws, you haven't got to uh, bribe the constable or this officer or that officer. You see. So you be true Krishna conscious, then there will be no disturbance from these demigods. Uh, but the less intelligent class of man, they in order to save themselves from the disturbance of the demigods, there are many varieties of demigods. They go to this, to that, to this, to that. But an intelligence man, that is also stated, Bhunam Janmanavante Ganavan Mahangrabhadva, one who is uh, perfectly intelligent, after many, many births of culturing knowledge, he comes to me as surrenders. Yes, Vāsudīva Sarvanti. Oh, Krishna, you are everything. That is the highest intelligence. So, Chaitanya Chaitamrita says, Krishna je bhaje seva rachat. Anyone who is engaged in Krishna consciousness is very intelligent man. Very intelligent man. Oh, Krishna je bhaje seva rachat. Chatur means intelligent. Yes. Go on. Whereas others who stick to the impersonal feature of the absolute truth and regard the forms of the demigods as temporary sacrifice their individual selves in the supreme fire and thus end their individual existences by merging <coughs> into the existence of the supreme. Such impersonalists relinquish their time in philosophical speculation for understanding the transcendental nature of the supreme. In other words, the fruity workers sacrifice their material possessions for material enjoyments, whereas the impersonalist sacrifices his material designations with a view to merging into the existence of the Supreme. For the impersonalist, the fire altar of the sacrifice is the Supreme Brahman, and the offering is the Self, being consumed by the fire of Brahman. The Krishna conscious person, however, sacrifices everything for the satisfaction of Krishna, and as such, all his material possessions, as well as his own self, everything, are sacrificed for Krishna, as with Arjuna. Thus he is the first class yogi, but he does not lose his individual existence. That's it.
Any question? Yes. We are internally individuals. So how do the impersonalists, even upon attaining their goal, merge into the impersonal Brahman judgment? That is the uh, sign of less intelligence. Therefore, we call the impersonalist as less intelligent. Just like the same example, the child is thinking that the constable is very important man. Uh, similarly, uh, the impersonalists are less intelligent in this sense that uh, what is this Brahma Jyoti? The Brahma Jyoti is combination of atomic spiritual sparks. Just like sun sign is combination of molecular signing particles. This is scientific. Uh, anything you take, either take sun sign or fire or water, you'll find atomic, even earth, they're all atomic. Small, very uh, small parts. Similarly, the Brahma Jyoti is combination of the atomic spiritual parts who are individual uh, living entities. So, uh, they may merge into that uh, existence of Brahma Jyoti, but because Every individual living entity has got individual desires. Therefore, they cannot exist very long in that individual condition. I, I want to say impersonal condition. That is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Jenne Rabindyakha Vimukta Banina Tayasta Bhavad Abhishuddha Buddha. Any person who is thinking, that by merging, or one who has already merged into the Brahma Jyoti, he has become liberated. Bhagavad says that he is not intelligent. What to speak of liberation? Ah. He says, Jannera Vindakha Vimukta Manina. Vimukta Manina means he is simply falsely thinking that he is liberated. Manina, just like you think yourself, just like so many rascals, he is thinking, I am God. You see, I am God. So, this is only thinking. Actually, they do not know what is God. Otherwise, they who should not, would not have dared to say that I am God. They do not know the meaning of God. You see, therefore, they are less intelligent. Ah. They are thinking, I am merged into this. Yeah. Just like the rabbit. The rabbit, when he is faced with some enemy, he closes its eyes. He thinks, now, now I am safe. <laughs> the rascal animal thinks that he is safe now. Well, he cannot see the enemy. Just like a child. Uh, when there is something fearful, the child, it is nature, closes the eyes. I have, I have practical experience. Uh, when I was a young man, I went to the zoo with my little son, and as soon as there was a tiger cage, uh, the child closed the eyes. Yes. He could not bear the vicious sight. This is natural. But similarly, th these impersonalists, they are closing their eyes, that's all. That's the void is. They are also doing that. Huh. that. Now I have become free by smoking or by uh, ganja eating, uh, drinking or smoking, you see. These things are simply false imagination. 
That way they are less intelligent. They are not intelligent. Uh, Bhagavad said, Jinni Ravindakha Bhimukta Mayana. They are self-complacent that I have become free, liberated, this and that. But actually their intelligence is very uh, uh, contaminated. Uh, they, Jinni Ravindakha Bhimukta Mayana. They are thim- simply thinking like that. Manina. Manina means actually he is not, but he is thinking. You can think that I am the proprietor of all the banks of this Los Angeles city. You can think. Who checks it? But are you actually the proprietor of all the banks of this uh, Los Angeles city? Anyone can think intoxication like anything. He has got the liberty. But that is not a fact. Uh, uh, so he. Uh, uh, Jannera Vindakha Vimuktamana Vimuktamana Tai Astabhava Abhishuddha Buddhaya. Their intelligence is contaminated because they have no information of the Supreme Personality of God. So long one does not reach to that point. Vasudeva Sarvamiti. Oh, Krishna is everything. Oh. It can take some time. But unless you reach to that point, your all intelligence is imperfect. Your knowledge is imperfect. That you must know. That for one who takes Krishna, he is most intelligent. Just like these foolish men, they are going very high on Sputniks and other machine, but they cannot find out the shelter and come back. You see? But they are thinking, oh, I, we are so much advanced in science, we are go so high. Are you go high, what is your result? You come back again. They will be part of, yes, it will be perfect in so many years, in this way and that way. Uh, they will never accept defeat, but actually, you see, they go and come back. That's all. Similarly, these foolish persons who are thinking that I, I shall merge into the uh, Brahma Jyoti, they are less intelligent because they cannot exist there. He has got inclination, desires. There is no facility for fulfilling your desires uh, unless you go to Krishna. Therefore, in order to fulfill the desires, he will come again to this material world. Because he wants activities, pleasure, ah, anandamaya bhyasa, the spirit soul and the Supreme Lord is by nature joyful. Whenever there is question of joyfulness, there must be varieties. So there is no variety. So, without variety, he cannot remain there for very long. He has to come. But because he has no information of the spiritual varieties, he is bound to come back to this material variety. That's all. So, therefore, their intelligence is less. Uh, they are not very high class men. <laughs> 